Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello, everyone. This is Marta. This is Anna. This is Lesser. And it's You've Got Five Options. <laughs> Thank you, Marta, for, for doing that. No team effort whatsoever, but I, I like that you mentioned that this is You've Got Five Options. Yes, it's us, guys. You've Got Five Options with Marta, Anna and Lasse. Yes. And today we are back with yet again a new live challenge from one of our uh, listeners uh, who, by the way, put a notation when he sent us a challenge that he's a really big fan of Lasse. Oh. <laughs> yes. And he would like Lasse to be present uh, while we are solving the challenge because sometimes we have those episodes that Lasse cannot be here due, so, due to some secret meeting he has yes. at the radio. Very secret Very meeting. So sometimes we, we don't don't have Lasse on some of the episodes and here the request was uh, very very clear I would like Lasse to join this episode uh, right. so yeah so you have a fan uh, but I would like to also point out that uh, he's a man but you know th this is a period of time we receive challenges from men right now so you know now maybe when ladies will hear that they can make a special dedication to Lasse then maybe maybe we'll get more requests here. Yeah. So uh, yes, guys, we have a challenge today and Marta will read it and we will see how we will go about it because it's actually quite difficult, I think. Yeah, I, I definitely feel it's a difficult challenge, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we do have options, so... We do have options. Good. Not <laughs> to worry. Okay, here comes the challenge. Not long ago, I moved to Denmark where I had to find a new career path because I live in a small town and I can't work doing what I used to do before. So I got a job as a handicap helper working for a woman with two children on her house. The person I help is my employer and she is in charge of the whole thing from rota making. I'm not sure. Um, what? Schedule, schedule making. Okay. Oh. oh, yeah. Thank you for that explanation. The delegation of the daily task and of supervising my performance. I've been in this job for nearly two years and at this point I have had enough of it. This is as the result of more than one irregularities concerning her performance as an employer. Her lack of manners making you do things that you are entirely out of what personal helpers should be doing and her obsession with controlling every single thing that you do. This has pushed me to take the decision to look for something new, which hasn't proven that easy so far. And I am not able to leave this job until I have found a new workplace. What I'm finding challenging and I would like to help me with, I would like you to help me with is how do I cope in the meantime? emotionally with the frustration that results from her abuses and unfairness until I find a new job. <laughs> you well, should have you should be able to see Lasse's face yes and with the pressure on he, that, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's from your one. fan yeah. yeah that's from your fan so your fan is <laughs> yeah but Lasse's face this is one of those moments when I really regret that we don't have it televised because <laughs> if you want to see Lasse's <laughs> face it will be like a okay so guys but let's let's try to wrap it up so we have a guy here who moved to Denmark and he couldn't mm -hmm. find a job within his uh, previous career path uh, he lives in a small town so the only job that he could get was a handicap helper and he helped a woman uh, with two uh, children and then he he says that the the person that he helps is in the same time her, his employee mm. and she's in charge of basically everything and uh, he's been there for two years and he has enough of it because and then we have lack of manners making him to do things that are not in his responsibilities uh, her obsession with controlling every single thing and yeah I, I guess he mentioned in the end uh, a word of abuse 
an unfairness. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it's a quite difficult challenge. Yeah. Uh, so, and he has already made a decision that he will leave the job. He wants to quit a job, but as, he's, as he wrote, he lives in a small town. So it was difficult so, so far to find a new job. So what he finds challenging for the time being is how to basically emotionally survive in the job. So how to cope with the frustration that he has that results from her abuse and unfairness until he gets the new job. So that's pretty much the recap of this very uh, long, and I have to say, peculiarly written challenge so uh, yeah because there were some uh, words like rota making which is schedule making basically before we will start with the options that uh, we will discuss of course i would just like to say that what i was thinking about when i uh, when i heard this challenge when i received this challenge was that you know when an employee no matter in one's, what circumstances, for instance, abuses you physically, for instance, hits you, right? You mean you, employee or employer? Uh, employer, employer. You can go straight away to police, right? And you can just, you know, uh, have some justice because it's evident. But sometimes when it's some sort of an emotional stress that you're being put in, either through uh, controlling behavior or through expecting you to do things that are totally not in your responsibilities or contract or just, you know, doing some emotional abuse of some sort putting you in stress it's not so easy to like prove it or to report it and sometimes i think the emotional well-being is just being slightly neglected at workplace you know that was my first thought when i thought about this i think that in those times the emotional abuse psychological abuse is already considered as an abuse and definitely yes. difficult to prove it, but definitely you can go to some legal authorities and make a case out of it. I think what is more difficult here is that the person is handicapped. Yeah. So the person <laughs> might not be in her full capacity to actually control herself. And I think, I don't know, I am not an expert in that area at all, but I have a sense that it could not be so straightforward and it could be that as a, a helper, to a person that is not in their full psychological capacity, that it might be a part of your work description somehow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It should be, if that's the case. If that's someone that is unable to control mm -hmm. themselves because they are actually sick. Mm -hmm. I totally agree because the thing is that in this description, we don't know what kind of handicap uh, case we are talking about. Is it no. physical? Is it psychological? Is it both? So we don't know. And Marta, you said it very well. I think that if we are uh, helping people, if we have a job where we have to help people that have some sort of a physical or psychological disability, you have to be trained for that. And uh, from what I could understand, although we don't know, but I'm not sure if he if he has a preparation for that, you know. And if it is, well, according but, but to the... He, he should have gotten that, you know that training if if that's the job he yeah. has now well you know? first of all it should be clear right yeah yeah if that's someone, what i'm trying to yeah, say that it should be clear that, that if you're dealing with a person that might you know have we don't exactly know what kind of handicap we're dealing with mm -hmm. but there but, can be some really tough challenges there and he, he should know you know that it's not fair if from his descriptions i can gather that that's not what he was aware of mm -hmm. in his point of view that's unfair and he feels abused yeah. and so on so i would say that was not a part of his description no. uh, of his job description <laughs> he actually even uses those words she makes you do things that are out of what you should be doing so definitely we have a case here where a person taking a job was unaware, unprepared, or whatever we call it, to take such a task. Yes, and here I think within very good point, Marta, because here we can say that either a person took a job and he was not aware, not prepared, and he should be prepared better, or we have a case of an abuse in a sense that you have some things in a contract, and then it's stated clearly, and yet your employer is uh, wanting or uh, demanding from you more, yeah. which can happen actually everywhere yeah, yeah. Uh, that that we know of uh, it even happens in in corporations sometimes when you uh, are doing way more than you are having in your contract because of some circumstances so it's we have to speculate about certain things but what we agree on is that he is in a position where he feels emotionally abused yeah and, my, and, um, and probably rightfully so i mean yes 
assumingly, you know, assume so. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he he feels that he's treated unfair, and he's at the point when he's I'm quitting the job, but I have to hold on until yeah, I will exactly get the new fine. one. Yeah. So how in the meantime? Can I go through this, through this emotional frustration? Because of course, you know, and Marta, you made a very good point. The person is handicapped, no matter what kind of disability it is. You you cannot just maybe like uh, be as strict or, or, or I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's a difficult situation. Yeah, it's also the reason why I was so silent in the first parts of this episode is because I'm really trying to take the situation in and, and evaluate what to do. Because it's such a tricky situation because the person he takes care of is also his employer. And <laughs> if they don't treat you right, uh, if you feel like you're actually getting abused, uh, you know, that's that's a very unusual and not fun place to be, you know. So I, I get his, uh, I don't want him to think that I don't, you know, take it serious because I do. That's why I was so quiet <laughs> because yeah. I was really trying to listen. Okay, so actually, for yeah. the for the reasons of taking it seriously, you were quiet. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm really trying to think, you know, what 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 to what, do. What to do? Yeah. Yeah, but I have prepared five options. Of yeah. course, you know, uh, those options can be taken separately. Those options can be combined. Some of them can be combined. And you know, I think uh, that the regular way to go about it is quit or not quit or what whatsoever. So mm -hmm. I was trying to give a different uh, into it also to open up a discussion about certain aspects of being in a job that yeah drains you or, or causes you problems and how to how to survive a certain period of time so option number one it's very very straightforward and simple quit today mm -hmm. now option number two seek legal help advice option number three emotionally detached from a situation. Option number four, uh, I called it Cosmic Mambo Jumbo. <laughs> Because uh, we have a couple of things that maybe are coming from a little bit of alternative ways of thinking. So one of the idea was kill her with kindness or, uh, for instance, try uh, some emotional tapping it's it's something that i will explain later so basically try to maybe energetically influence her to create better energy because i can assume there is also a lot of bad energy at this mm. point of time when he's yeah. frustrated and she's yeah. abusive so they are in this vicious circle of some sort of negative energy and the last one rethink your career make a plan for the future and stick to it every single day yeah. So basically, uh, just work on getting out of the job, get yourself yeah. motivated. We don't know how motivated he is, uh, but it's also written that he lives in a small uh, town, so it's hard to find job. So here I would also like us to discuss afterwards different options, maybe opening for different cities, mm. different possibilities, but that will come later. So option number one is quit today now. And I think it's very straightforward. And I think uh, you both understand why. I proposed it because it's an obvious option and I am actually really um, sensitive for uh, cases when there is a certain type of an abuse yeah, yeah, yeah. especially in a workplace where there is a, you know very artificial yet it is there that power already someone has a power over you someone can fire you or or keep you and it's already uneven because someone there is a there is a power above you and if you add an abuse to it or some sort of like mistreatment, I think it's even worse because you feel like you are not only dependent on someone, but you are also mistreated. So uh, my first idea was uh, quit today and now. Marta, what do you think? And that's, of course, an obvious option. And of course, if you are already finding yourself in you've been there for close to two years, you have experienced that you have probably tried uh, doing different things to change that situation and you feel abused you feel you're treated unfair that's of course something that you should try to get out of as soon as possible yeah because that's it's so damaging to yourself i also feel like being in such a situation where you feel like you're abused and it's also your employer so there's also the position of power that you kind of work for this you work for this person but they also abuse you yeah it's it's not fun and it's two years you know that's that's a long time so maybe he had tried different met methods we don't know but it's definitely i think it could be a very valid if maybe slightly scary 
option to take, but if it's so horrible as it sounds, you might just need to end it and be over with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously. I, I forgot. Because going around with those kind of frustrations and that, yeah. you know, anger and just feeling mistreated all the time, you know, you, you don't feel like you, you don't deserve to get treated like that. Exactly. You know? And I think it's a type of job that you cannot just leave yeah. behind uh, the, 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 you know, the, the house, because that's the case, the house door, you take this with you home, you know? Yeah, exactly. So I think that that's, that's another it, point. You it has so many ramifications, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it's two years. That's yeah. a long time. Yeah. And I know it's scary to just say, I'm going to end it now. And then you don't know what to do next. But it's so unhealthy to mm -hmm. be in such an environment. And it, it's so damaging on yourself, you know, because you can't just leave it. You take yeah. it home and you know next tomorrow it's another day. It's yeah. another day, you know. I, I feel like it, it's a very valid option, even if it's scary. Because yeah. it, you have to take care of yourself. Also, you have to respect yourself. That's the thing, you know, self-respect. Yeah. Yeah. You don't deserve to be treated like that. I, I totally agree. Guys, I forgot to tell you that this challenge actually came with a name. So he, I don't know if this is the na real name of the person, Jack. Jack. Okay. Or it's a, or it's a it's a code name. But last uh, that's a, a lot of valid points. And especially yeah, when I was thinking, this is a type of a job you cannot leave mm -hmm. at the workplace you take this with you exactly. and uh, i know that this sounds like a very um sharp option we talked with marta about maybe making some minimum requirements and you know showing this to her but as you mentioned two yeah. years we assume jack you have done it but okay what are the risks here of course the risk is we know that not long ago, I moved to Denmark. So yeah. actually, your residence here might be based on the fact that you have a job. Yeah. So we don't know, but, you know, I'm trying to read from this. Another thing is that, of course, you would like to have another job. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you quit, I think you don't have a, you don't, you are not entitled for notice, right? Uh, for notice period, if you quit the job. I think there are different contracts. Yeah. You cannot yes. just say There's yes or different no. Contracts. Yeah, that's true. That's, you cannot yeah, yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. But what, what I was thinking here that, of course, it can be difficult to just quit right now. But I also imagine sometimes moments um. when people just come to work and, you know, there is this one last drop. Mm -hmm. And then they are just like, fuck it, I'm leaving. So it could happen, you know, it could happen here. But another benefit actually of this uh, option of quitting now is something that me and Marta talked about in different challenge. I think it was our fourth challenge. It was the in the gutter option. Sometimes when we have a work and even if we are not happy mm. or even like in this case, we are abused, we are still having a stability, sense of financial stability because we have that work, we earn those money and we are there. And then if we just quit from one day to another, it's scary, but it might actually motivate us to find something way faster. Because yes. even if we are not happy with the job, we are still in a comfort zone. Yeah. We are still there. And maybe we are like, maybe there are some days when it's better than some days when it's worse. And then we are just, you know, okay, I can manage, I can manage. And then yeah. after some time, no, I cannot manage. And sometimes, you know, just quitting like this just kicks you in a bat and just motivates you to yes. find something. So there's definitely a motivational factor in that, you know, mm -hmm. that can propel you forward. But I will also say that even though it's difficult being in a situation where you feel mistreated and you just can't, you know, leave it at work, I would say when he has time off or some time for himself, go to some place where you feel, yeah, safe or a place you like or a person you like. What I'm trying to say is that it can be difficult to make long-term plans where you are in a place like that where you don't feel well and you feel mistreated and you're frustrated and angry and stressed out and all these things but maybe he can go to a place where he feels safe where he likes being you know when he has the possibility when he's not at work um though he is a caretaker so i don't know how often you know how long he he is there but that's hard to say but if he has the time for himself, uh, like a day off or something, I think I would try and sit down and really think over, you know, he knows that this is not good for him. But maybe try and make like a, sh a shorter term plan, just say a year from now, where do I want to be, you know? And it could be a very simple thing that I just want to be happy. I want to be appreciated. Or I'll try to, I think it's difficult to know five years from now, 
mm-hmm. because it seems like so long away. And so maybe, you know, I would say, I don't know if it makes sense what I'm saying. It, it makes sense. <laughs> and actually, we will come back to you yeah. and we will grab you to talk more uh, in option five afterwards, mm. because that, that ties up. But you said something also very, very wise, that when you are in a situation like this of such a um, um, emotional frustration, sometimes it's very difficult to focus yes. on a job search, to actually mm-hmm. have a clear mind, to have this motivation because you yeah. are so much into this spiral of you negative. You feel trapped. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Exactly. So that was a very, very good point. And but, I think. But, but I think yep. what I'm trying to say is yep. that even though it's difficult, if you have some time or some place you like to be, or if mm-hmm. they're just home at yourself or something where you feel like, here, I can relax for a bit, you know, when you are in that moment, then that's maybe where you should try and think, may, maybe make like a list just like a year out, you know, mm-hmm. where do I want to be in a year from now? And, and try maybe not to be too unrealistic about it. But, but you know, you need to change. So maybe try and make like a small list just for a year ahead I think this is a place where I want to be you know a year from now so it's a little more manageable maybe but you have to be at the right place of mind when you do that yeah and it's I, I guess it's hard to get out of it when you are uh, mm-hmm. so it was a very good point Lasse yeah and then we actually have a second option and I think this is uh, this is all we will discuss today because we we don't have time for all the five options. But I w- I put this one out because for me it was pretty obvious. And I do have to say I don't have a big experience here in Denmark with that. But it was seek legal help or advice because of course if Jack's terms of contract are for instance violated, so because he mentioned he has to do uh, things that are not in his responsibility, then I think this is something you can actually. Uh, go to but i don't know even really where either you are a member of a union Yeah, uh, maybe if he's a member of a union but Mm -hmm. i don't know i mean he has a contract you have to have that so if he knows that it's being violated you know Mm -hmm. then i think uh, a good idea is to exactly to first of all it doesn't have to be that he goes to union straight away if he's not a member or or to to commune but maybe uh, maybe uh, jack you know some danish people danes like some friends that can give you at least an advice or you can actually try to uh, google you know use uh, the uncle googles like marta likes to say because i remember at one point of time i was seeing some news from the this polish uh, forum for for polish people in Denmark and uh, there are some histories of of some sort of you know abuse Mm -hmm. at the workplace for instance not paying the salaries or some um, employees that are you know like cheating on hours and so on and those are not necessarily only days sometimes those are poles placed in Poland having a company hiring other poles who are then afterwards uh, mistreated regarding the contract or what they were supposed to be paid and I know that uh, there are uh, they were members of unions and even if they were not there were sometimes cases when those people were going there and getting free legal advice and uh, normally i think in denmark from what i uh, remember those things are treated seriously and they are being solved it's not like you know you will just say it and no one will take care of the case so i think it would be a, a good idea marta what do you think I think definitely going for legal advice uh, is a great idea because, as you said, in Denmark, this is treated seriously. And I'm sure there is several legal authorities. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. I I know there definitely Aarhus, there's also, of course, he lives in a small city. But but Google, there are, you know, free legal advice you can get, um, I think. It could also be from a different perspective. Uh, one uh, uh, angle that we have been discussing is that maybe Jack was not prepared for this kind of job, maybe didn't get the right training. So th- uh, it could also be an option. There might be a union he could sign himself up for if he hasn't so far, where he could actually yeah. get a relevant training to be able to actually cope with this kind of uh, person if quitting a job right now is not an option for other reasons for example so definitely legal but, advice yeah, is but, a great and, idea and just on the the personal side you know i, I really think the seek help even if you know like a friend or some danish colleague or a friend someone you know you can talk to with this also helps because it means you get hurt and and they can actually go through you, you with your contract and give you probably you know concrete advice and um, this is a clear violation you know this is not right and also just the sense of being heard as a human being, you know, to have some, you know, oh, here's someone I can be open 
uh, mm-hmm. with, and they can yeah. I, I can actually say to them loud face to face, and we can have a conversation as human beings, and I can say these things I've been going around with for so long, being mistreated, and that can also be the first step, and that can be helped just to be heard, you know. Yeah, I, I totally, uh, I totally agree. And that's agree. just on a personal human level. You yeah, know? I totally agree. Well, because it's not fun going around with no, that kind of frustration. But you know? Jack has actually reached out to us, so I yeah. think this is a first step. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and we 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 can give him some advice. So I guess he is uh, he is seeking for for that kind of a uh, mm-hmm. more like a human help, right? Like on on a human, um, you know, understanding Just being advice. Just acknowledged, mm-hmm. you know. That, exactly. Yeah. But on the other hand, as I as I as I think that this is extremely important, uh, the legal help and advice yeah, exactly. is also very important. And I think that I also have until now a slightly uh, weird feeling like because this is not the country I was born in, right? So I live here for years, but it's um, I, sometimes I might also feel like a little bit lost with this regulations mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I don't know them. So I think that some people are just not going to any uh, unions or they are not trying to reach that free legal advice because they might feel like, you know, I'm not from here. I don't know if, if how will this go? Will they treat me seriously? And so on. So that could also be a factor. And I would like to say that if, if, if Jack, you are thinking like this, the first step would be definitely just to go on internet and okay. see there if you are feeling if you have some kind of a blockage to go to unions or directly to commune or to some advisor try to see where you can get some advice i don't know if sometimes you can get that advice anonymously like maybe mm-hmm. probably not but maybe you can just schedule a meeting and yeah. just go somewhere and uh, you know get a free advice but first try to maybe read maybe you will see that there is more stories like this maybe you will see that people what people have done in those situations yeah. because i had no idea that you know there were some situations like with with some polish guys being mistreated then i read about it and they won the case and i was like wow this system works it was something that i learned it wasn't necessary for me but you know you learn through 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 reading those things yeah i think that uh, that is a that is a definitely a good option and that was just the two options that we had for the time being our time is up but jack and the rest of our dear listeners We really hope that you will tune in for the next episode when we will discuss the other three options. Yeah, and uh, I hope uh, (laughs) I could help out a a little bit that uh, it wasn't too disappointing what I had to say. No, actually not at all. Not at all. I think that you also pointed out uh, something important that, you know, it's not necessarily only the legal or financial level. It's also a very much a human level. But of course, it's a big part of it. I think the the seeking help is very important in his current situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think, but then we will also have three other options that might not be so much uh, practical, but they will actually answer more in depth the question of how to cope with emotional mm. frustration, some techniques that everyone can use in any stressful situation. So I hope that you will tune in, guys, and you will enjoy. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks. Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.